Let's bring protein into the conversation because in the past decades, we've heard a lot about carbohydrate, low carb, high carb, fat, low fat, high fat, but protein's kind of been out of the conversation until recently. There's a lot of confusion right now about what is optimal for protein. We're hearing people push on the upwards of three and a half grams per kilogram, which is about 1.8 grams per pound. We also hear people say, no, 50 grams of protein total per day for women is adequate. It's actually somewhere in between. Because if we look at the recommended daily allowance right now, we see it's around 0.8 kilograms of body weight. And that I want people to understand is the bare minimum that you need to consume to prevent malnutrition. When we're looking at an active individual, as well as an active aging individual, we need more. When we bring our sex differences into effect, we see that women age differently than men in the fact that we have peri and postmenopause. Men age in a linear fashion. Women have a really specific point in their lives where all of a sudden their body's responding differently. Why I'm bringing that up is because as we get older, our bodies, both men and women, become more resistant to the growth effects of protein and growth effects of exercise. So we need to look at dosing more of both. So for women, as we get into our 40s onward, we are looking more at that one gram to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which sits around that two to 2.2 grams per kilo. When we're looking at women who are in their reproductive years, 18 to about 35 to 40, 1.6 grams per kilogram or hitting about that 0.9 grams per pound is the bare minimum that you wanna have if you're an active individual. Of course, in times where you're trying to build through strength training, you're gonna increase your protein. So when we're looking at protein and protein effects, it's not just about building muscle and maintaining lean mass. There is a critical component of the amino acids of protein that go to help with bone and bone density. We also see amino acids are important for neurotransmitters, for nerve conduction, for so many other functions within the body. So if we're low in protein, then we're gonna have systemic effects that we might not notice right away, but down the line, there's definitely an impact, especially when it comes to brain, bone, and muscle health. I think two of the biggest things to take away from protein and the intake capacity is we've neglected it for so long and it's really difficult for so many women to wrap their heads around increasing protein and protein needs. But the longer term effect of maintaining just that RDA is the face that we have of osteopenia, cognitive decline, sarcopenia. So if we start earlier by increasing our total protein intake and managing that intake across the day, we're going to have a stronger skeletal system, a stronger musculoskeletal system, and a better brain health if we start looking at increasing our protein intake from that 0.8 grams per pound, trying to eke our way up to at least one gram per pound, but ideally 1.2 to 1.3 grams per pound. Because lifestyle and life phase can affect how much protein you need from puberty, pregnancy, reproductive years, perimenopause, postmenopause, it's hard to condense it all into one short YouTube segment. I will refer you to the position stand we wrote with the International Society of Sport Nutrition last year on the female athlete that actually encompasses all the lifespan and how much protein you need across the day as well as pre and post exercise. So many people think that getting that one gram per pound of body weight in protein is really difficult. But if we pay attention, it's really not that difficult. We can look at how do we get 30 to 40 grams at each meal, maybe 15 to 20 at each snack, and what the quality of that protein is. So if you're feeling overwhelmed with increasing protein, make small steps over the next three weeks, increase your protein from what you're having now to trying to hit that one gram per pound. It's very achievable, but it does take some steps to get used to thinking about protein and putting it on your plate. So if you have any questions, shoot them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.